Getting the Solstice of Heroes armor is actually pretty simple. You need to play some activities, you need to generate some orbs, and until you get into the Masterwork versions, there's nothing too crazy that you're required to do. Now, the one thing I want to talk about is efficiency while doing this, especially if you want to get all the armor pieces on all three characters. Maybe you don't even have a Warlock, maybe you don't have a Titan, but if you're going to grind through them all, you're going to want a couple of tips on how to do this. Now, honestly, the easiest tip, the biggest tip is literally just do activities. If you're going to be generating orbs, you might as well be generating them in activities. You might as well be doing those strikes or those public events or whatever it might be to unlock your gear. And I highly recommend you focus on one character at a time to make sure that it's done, it's over with, you don't have to return and do some random thing. Now, I just wanted to say a big thank you to Cheese Forever. He made a couple guides on how to get this stuff. He actually, I think he data mined this, honestly, is what he did. But he, uh, he posted this on the Reddit. I'm using this infographic so you can see it. But realistically, the objectives for Hunter, Warlock, uh, Titan, they're just kind of the same thing over and over again, but maybe in a different order. Maybe the boots requirements is the same as a, a gauntlet requirement on the Titan, things like that. It's nothing too crazy. So my next big tip is honestly, do this for your daily powerful drops. You're gonna do those drops anyways, you wanna get those powerful upgrades, you might as well just make progress bit by bit on your Solstice armor. You have way more time than you think. Doing these activities is not that difficult. If you were to do this a little bit here, a little bit there, you can definitely master work some gear. As long as you're a somewhat competent player and hopefully are in a clan. And that's something I wanted to talk about. These are the masterwork objectives if you want to max out your armor, and one of them is playlist strikes with clanmates. Now, if you're not in a clan, you need to start looking for one now, or start your own, make an LFG post, I don't care what you do, but don't screw yourself because you waited too long to find clanmates to do this. There's probably a bunch of clans looking for players right now, so make sure you do this so that you can get in one, get the strikes completed, and not be missing out. There's also a need to complete the Shattered Throne with two or less players. Now, for some people, they can solo it. It's very easy. But for others, even completing Shattered Throne with three players is very tough for them. Okay, not everyone is a godlike player. Now, you better find a good teammate if you're not feeling up to date with the PvE. Doing it with two players might be very tough for you, and it might take you an extended period of time. So you want to make sure you're getting to this point as soon as humanly possible. Now, there's also one other thing. You need to reset your rank in the Crucible. If you never touch the Crucible, this is going to take you multiple hours. You can wait for bonus Valor weekends, but if you haven't touched the Crucible at all, you had better get on it before the season is over. Because this isn't just an hour or two. This is 10, 15, 20 hours, depending how much you win and lose. So get on this now. Make sure you do it. Don't regret it later. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is generating orbs is extremely easy. Just using an energy weapon will lead to orbs generated. You can also use your abilities, and the tougher the enemy, the more orbs that are generated. Now, if you're killing the yellow health bar enemies, like, say, a yellow knight or a yellow cabal enemy, you'll actually generate not only one orb or two orbs of the energy type that you're using, but also one for the subclass. So if you want to get void orbs as fast as humanly possible, use void weapons and the void subclass. If you want arc ones, same thing goes, but you can mix and match. When killing yellow or orange health bar enemies, it appears you get one for your subclass and you get one for the energy type that you killed them with. So you can actually get uh, void and solar or void and arc if you choose to use different type weapons and different subclasses. Honestly, orbs aren't an issue. Kill stuff, get orbs, it's really, really easy. The key is doing activities. Don't waste time doing stuff like this when you could be generating orbs in actual activities you need to do. Now, if you're not a big PvP guy, you might be really happy to know that based on what subclass you're using, you're always going to get two orbs. That means you can run a kinetic weapon, you can run uh, your favorite kinetic sniper or shotgun or whatever it is, and you can generate two orbs each time. 
However, it appears you also get an elemental bonus, and if you kill someone with an elemental weapon, you will then generate one of that weapon type and one of your subclass. As you can see there, I got three void ones because I used a void subclass and a void weapon. Also, don't get sniped all day like I am! Jesus! I had a pretty damn good game, but I got 56 orbs in one game, so don't stress out too much. You can also do it in Gambit if you want. Now, you're also going to need keys to unlock Solstice packages, which can have some terrible blue rewards, but things like mods and masterwork cores as well. You can buy these magnets that will allow you to get more keys, and I highly recommend you do it. And then, if you want to bang out as many keys as humanly possible, go to a planet, get your fire team to do some heroic public events, and you run around doing the patrols. Now, you need to make sure that you tag the public event so that you get a reward as well, but the person that's doing all of these patrols is generating keys for everyone, and the people finishing up the public event are generating keys for everyone. So, if you get both people, or all three of you doing this, you can then double up on the rewards, and it is extremely fast, especially if you're using one of the magnets. I got three. That's right, three keys from one little tiny easy patrol that took like five seconds. When you stack this with public events, heroic public events that give you five of them, you can get like, I don't know, 15 keys if you're lucky in like three minutes, two minutes. Depends on the public event, obviously. The Cabal Drill is one of the fastest ones because you can just nuke the uh, the Thresher and then you can nuke the boss. But uh, this one here, the, the Drills, is a little bit longer, absolutely. But you can see there, three keys for a random, easy patrol that takes just a few seconds. It's definitely a great way to get keys, but don't sleep on the EAZ either because if you're slaying out there, you can get 12 chests. Well, you can actually maybe even get more than 12 chests, but that's the most that we got. Now, you have to remember that you might not get a key in every chest because sometimes you get solstice packages, but that's okay because you're gonna need solstice packages for all these keys anyways. But when you use the key finder or the key magnet, you can get a ton of keys and packages from doing this, and it's only five minutes per run, or, or maybe maybe seven or eight minutes by the time you find all of the, uh, the, the chests. Now, one tip I have for you is use an EDZ cache finder. You can find it on multiple different ghosts. One of the easy ones is the Season 1 uh, kind of EDZ ghost shell. This will allow you to find the chests even easier. It will put a little symbol above its head, and you can smash through this as fast as humanly possible and not spend the full, you know, three minutes searching for chests like an idiot like I am. Now, I mentioned it before, but I do recommend you focus on one character at a time to make sure that it's completed and over with. The other reason why I say this is I don't know how much time you have. Someone like me that it's my job to game and do this, I can get three characters done pretty easily. And while it doesn't give me a massive advantage, it's not like it's going to be life-changing, if you get this all masterworked and completed, it does give you access to a 2.0 armor set as Shadow Keep launches. Now, we don't have all the details on that just yet, but it might be difficult to get a 2.0 armor set right at the start of Shadow Keep if you don't do this. So if you're very invested in this game, if you like playing this game, I do recommend doing it just in case. Who knows? Maybe it'll take you a couple of days to get a regular 2.0 set, and this way you've got it right at the start. You can infuse it, you can upgrade it, you can optimize it, and it's Probably a good idea, especially if you plan on jumping into Shadow Keep right at the start, right at the launch. I also worry that if you split this up between all three characters, you might run out of time, and while yes, you might make some awesome progress on all three, you might not finish it. You might not finish it on all three, but you might not even finish it on one or two of them because you spent too much time. There are multiple, multiple, multiple hours of grind here. And if you're spending too much of it dicking around and not optimizing, you're going to regret it later on, especially if your playtime is a little bit lower than the average person. Focus on one character, grind out the activities, make sure you're in a clan, make sure that you're not randomly generating orbs and activities that you don't need to make progress, and you're easily going to finish it on at least one character over the next month or so. Now, 
There are some harder activities. I mentioned them before. If you can find some people to consistently game with, that's going to make things a lot easier as well because jumping into something like the Shattered Throne with only one other player, hopefully they're not a complete potato. Again, make sure you're getting into a clan as soon as humanly possible because you don't want to be missing out on that. That's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to ViewSonic for sponsoring the channel. And if you guys are looking for an amazing monitor to game on and optimize those FPS, make sure to check out ViewSonic. Links are in the description to two of the monitors that I like. That's it for me. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.